want to avoid this summer slide in learning. The owner of Chickadee Kids Company in Burlington, Lisa Evans, has some tips to keep your kids curious and entertained over the next couple of months. Good morning. Good morning. So tell us first of all about what Chickadee Kids Company is. Sure, so we are a toy and bookstore in Burlington. Um, we are an early year store. So we cater to those years of zero to about age six or seven. Uh, so we kind of go up to about grade two in terms of learning. Okay, so these are the kids then that over the pandemic have really been impacted. They've had so much, you know, some of them haven't even been in a physical school until a few months ago. And it, it's, it's like, how do you keep that curve of that little gap of what they did learn in person? How do you keep that going over the summertime? Yeah, so for those kids that, uh, you know, obviously we were in and out of school during the pandemic, for kids that were in kindergarten, they might not have even had a full year of school yet. Um, so the summer slide is just the term that teachers usually use um, for that gap in learning that occurs during the summer months when kids aren't focusing on their uh, learning, their reading, their writing, their math skills. So we do have a number of ways that uh, parents can help um, to deal with that summer slide or lessen that summer slide. And the good news for kids and parents is you don't need to turn your house into a school. You don't need to be doing multiple worksheets every single day to keep up with learning, but it is really important to, incur to incorporate learning into your summer activities. So the first thing is to read every single day. Um, so the number one way to avoid the summer slide is reading every single day. Um, so maybe for kids that are younger, uh, that means reading with them. For kids that are a little bit older, they can read independently. Um, really important to build reading time into your day. So maybe that's a bedtime uh, routine. Maybe that's during a quiet time in the afternoon. You want to get your kids reading every day. So at Chickadee Kids Company, we have a summer reading club. So we have a summer reading challenge, which is a 30 day challenge. Um, we also have a little reading log so kids can write down the books that they're reading every day, whether they liked or didn't like the books. Parents can provide stickers as motivation. Really important just to encourage kids to be reading every day. Uh, for the younger readers, what we really like are these little level readers. So these are just really simple little stories. Um, they have beautiful illustrations that help guide kids to what the words on the page are. Very simple words on the page. A lot of sight words, which are great for early readers. So that is a great way to encourage kids to read independently, which is a really important thing to keep that reading skill going all summer long. Mm -hmm. um, the second is to incorporate learning into your daily activities. So let's say you're going on a trip to the zoo. Have your child look at the signs um, where the animals are and have them read the signs. If you're at a restaurant, having them read the menu. Um, if you're going out on, let's say a scavenger hunt, take along a little notebook with a little pencil and have them jot down all the really interesting things that they see on their walk. Um, for my son, I've created a little journal for him for the summer. So every day we'll take a picture or he can draw a picture of the activity that we did that day. And then having him write down a couple of words, could be a sentence, not expecting, you know, a full journal entry, um, whatever he feels like doing, just to kind of keep those writing skills active every single day. And then um, what the about math skills? Yeah, so playing games, that's the third thing. So we want kids to learn, but they wanna have fun. Um, so behind me, we have loads of educational games that focus on uh, math literacy. Um, and so playing these kind of games is a great way um, to get them to, to learn at the same time that they're just playing a game. They don't even realize that they've done 10 math equations because to them, they've just been playing bingo. Um, so these are some of the really fun games that we have that are now popping up onto your screen um, that focus on um, some of the math skills and literacy skills. Um, one of my favorites I have here is called Zingo. So this is like a bingo game. Um, you slide the little zinger and uh, this one right here, this one is sight word. So you slide the zinger and a little word pops up and it's a bingo game. So they don't even realize by the end of playing this game that they've just said 20 sight words or that they've just read 20 sight words. They just know that they've had a lot of fun playing the game. So that is a great way to encourage them to read. We've got about a minute left, but I can imagine that leaving them to their imagination, giving them some time to get bored is probably a very good thing, right? Because then you're you're thinking, you're making up stories in your head, you're, you're doing all kinds of stuff when you're bored. Yes, so one of the things that I always tell parents is to let your child's interests lead their learning. So, you know, when they're in school, they don't always have a choice of what topic they're gonna be talking about. So in the summertime, let them lead the learning. Let's say they find an interesting bug in their backyard. Okay. Maybe you need a little project out of it. Get a bug house, get a journal. Great um, idea lead, um, let their interest lead the learning.
Okay, Lisa, some great ideas there. Chickadee Kids Company in Burlington got some great ideas for learning in summer. Thanks so much.